Hey guys, welcome back to the Mr. Tendy YouTube channel. I'm Mr. Tendy and today I want to give you guys some tips and tricks on how you guys can build your credit score and have a 700 plus score as a teenager, young adult, college student. So let's get into it. So the first tip I have for you guys is to become an authorized user on someone else's credit account. Experian defines an authorized user, quote, as a secondary account holder on a credit card. These users can make purchases but are not ultimately responsible for payment, unlike a joint account holder or a cosigner would be. One important key element of becoming an authorized user is finding the right person to become an authorized user for. You wanna make sure that the person you're becoming an authorized user for, that their credit account is good standing, they have a good credit store, and they have good payment history, and they haven't missed any payments, they don't have any derogatory marks, because you're gonna be ultimately inheriting that history. So you wanna make sure that you partner with the correct individual, the individual will trust you, because obviously anything you spend on the card that you get is gonna be on their account. Once you find that individual who has a high credit score and they're willing to take you on as an authorized user, what you're gonna do is you're gonna call up the credit card company and you're gonna to ask to become an authorized user on their card. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna ask you for some information like your social security number, all that, so they can run your credit. And um, obviously it's gonna be a lot easier for you to get a card when you have an authorized user by your side. And what's gonna happen is they're gonna go through like an approval process and they're gonna get back to you. And if you're approved, then they're gonna send you your own card with your own name and number on it. But um, it's gonna be an authorized user. So when you spend money on it, it's gonna go to the other person's account that you're an authorized user for. And they're gonna ultimately be responsible for paying for it. Now in my, my case, I was able to find a family member who was willing to help me out and I built that trust. And I called up the credit card company and asked to put me as an authorized user and basically I inherited their credit history. So by the time I ch checked my credit score when I turned 18, I had a very big bump in my score. So that definitely helped me out. So I really recommend consulting family members who have good credit scores or individuals who you can trust and they can trust you because ultimately you're gonna have access to their account. So you wanna make sure that you have that trust between each other. So for the person that's actually allowing another individual to become an authorized user, they obviously gotta be careful um, who they can trust because if it's not someone they can trust, then that can hurt both individuals because it will tank your credit score because they're spending way too much and they're not letting you know. And it can tank their credit score because their credit score is connected to your credit score. So you really wanna make sure you find the right partner and they can trust you. So with these authorized user cards, you don't really even have to spend money on it as an authorized user to get the benefits. As long as the card holder spends money on it and pays it off in time, um, you're gonna inherit that good history. So there, you don't you don't have to spend money on an authorized user card in order to get a good history. You just have to partner with the right individual. So when it comes to the credit card company that you're becoming an authorized user for, you wanna make sure that they allow that feature because some companies do not. Um, so I would just give them a call ahead of time and ask them if you're able to become an authorized user under someone else's account. And if they say yes, then proceed to talk um, with the card holder and see if they're willing to give you an authorized um, user card and uh, see if you can make that relationship work. For building credit at a really young age, becoming an authorized user is definitely one of the best strategies because I think some companies even allow like as young as 13 years old to become an authorized user on someone else's account. So I would definitely um, look into this option if you're looking to build your credit. Um, um, just, just again, the key point is you really, really have to find the right individual um, who has a good credit score and you can trust to make on-time payments because ultimately whatever happens on their credit score is gonna happen to your score on that certain account. Um, so you really wanna make sure you partner the right individual, but as long as you follow the rules I share with you, then you should be all set. And um, let's move on to the next tip. So unlike becoming an authorized user under someone else's credit account, when you apply for a credit card as a co-signer, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be the account holder. So you're gonna be ultimately responsible for all the payments and making sure your credit stays in good standing. Unlike with an authorized user, the card holder who is allowing you to become an authorized user is responsible for those payments and not the authorized user. So um, it's definitely more of a responsibility shift. So as a co-signer, you actually have your own card with your own name. The co-signer is just there because some companies require co-signers for individuals who don't have enough income, who will lack a little bit of credit history, and they bring on a co-signer in order to make sure those payments are paid. So the co-signer is kind of a backup just in case you don't make your payments. Most major credit card companies actually don't offer the option to have a cosigner. There's only a few companies that actually offer it. And I'm going to attach a nerd wallet article below describing some of the company's policies, such as American Express, Barclays, Capital One, Chase, Citi, and Wells Fargo do not offer the option to have a cosigner, but many of them do offer options for authorized users. So that's why I ultimately became an authorized user because more companies offered the feature. 
but um, some companies do offer it, such as Bank of America, US Bank, USAA. So I, I would double check. Um, I would call the company um, to make sure like none of their policies changed, and I would just ask them if um, applying for a credit card with a cosigner would be an option. Um, I actually, for one of my first personal credit cards, I went into Bank of America and I asked them if I can get a cosigner. And it turned out since I was a student, I could apply completely on my own and get my own student card. So that's why I ultimately ended up doing. And I, I actually love the card, it's absolutely amazing. And um, I don't need a cosigner because I'm a student. So um, that's another option as well. Another potential drawback similar to becoming an authorized user is you need to find that right individual who's gonna trust you because um, that individual will ultimately be responsible if you don't make payments. Um, so un unlike the authorized user, like I said, when you when someone co-signs on a card, you're going to be responsible for those payments. So they're going to they're going to make you pay. But if you don't pay for some reason, they're going to go after your co-signer. So you really want to make sure that when you build that trust, similar to becoming an authorized user, you really want that person who's co-signing um, to trust you as well. So that's going to be the difficult part of a co-signer. Once again, I urge you to kind of seek family members, see if they're interested in something like that, and they trust you. As as an actual co-signer, you're the one that becomes legally liable if the person you're co-signing for doesn't pay. So once again, you really want to find the right person that you can co-sign with and make sure they trust you. If you don't, then it can damage both the co-signer's credit and your credit. But if it goes well, then it's gonna help your credit and it won't really affect the co-signer's credit because they're just kind of there just to make sure that you pay. Um, so you really just want to make sure you find the right individual. So the risks of becoming an authorized user um, or having a co-signer help you get a credit card is obviously damaging the credit reports of yourself the, and the card holder or the cosigner. Uh, you don't want to have to put your cosigner in a situation um, where they can't make the payments either and it totally damages their credit report and your credit. Report. All right, so my next tip is for students um, in high school or college who are looking to build their credit as well. I highly recommend if you're a high school or a college student that you get a student credit card because the income requirements are like non-existent. They're very minimal because they understand your students and they understand your responsibilities as a student and you don't always have enough income um, in order to qualify for a credit card that's not a student card. So the cards I really highly recommend, I'm gonna make a separate review on each of these cards, but it's gonna be the Bank of America Cash Back Rewards Student Card, which I'm gonna show here. The Chase Freedom Student, which is found here, which many people don't know about because you can't apply for this card online. You have to actually go on the bank, um, the Chase Bank, and they'll get it for you. Um, and then the last one is gonna be the Discover It Student Card. I found these to be the best cards to start off with. Specifically, my favorite has been the Bank of America Cash Rewards card. Um, I've had that card for over a year and it's been great, but I'm gonna make separate reviews explaining those benefits um, for those cards. But I would definitely look into these cards in order to help you start building credit. Um, and once again, you should, personally, I have all three of these cards and I love them all. I'm gonna make a separate review on each of them, explaining the benefits and drawbacks of each. So the final strategy here is definitely one that it's very unique. I never really thought of this myself, but um, it's actually a pretty good idea and I was thinking about doing it myself. Um, but what you can do is you can get what's called a credit builder loan from like a local credit union. So what you can end up doing is you can take $200 to a local credit union and ask for a secured personal loan or personal line of credit. And you can do this between two or three different um, banks or credit unions. You, you don't have to take out a large loan at all. You can, it can be very small. But what you want to do is you just want to prove that you can pay that back. So when lenders or uh, credit card companies look at your credit report, they see that you made those payments and that they're on time, they're not late, and they can kind of trust you to carry their card. This is, this is also a good benefit because um, part of your credit report is the credit mix. So you want to make sure that um, in order to build a really good credit score that you can handle different types of debt. So right now I only have, I have three credit cards. I don't have any loans. Um, so I don't have the loan like credit history. So lenders are gonna be a little iffy trying to lend to me because I don't have any history of paying back a loan. In order to make yourself kind of well-rounded at a young age, you can go get these really um, low dollar amount loans and just pay them back to prove that you can make those payments on time, to prove to lenders that you are capable of making payments. So those have been my tips on how to build a 700 plus credit score as a teenager, young adult, college student, or if you're new to credit. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I, I just wanna emphasize that credit is definitely, can be very dangerous, but it can also really help you out. Um, specifically, I'm looking to build credit to invest in real estate and get, get really good rates on loans. So it's extremely important for me to have a really good credit score. 
And it, it's extremely important for everyone to have a good credit score. They want to get really good rates, really good credit cards. So I just really emphasize that you really make your payments on time and don't get trapped with uh, with spending way too much money on credit cards. Because getting in credit card debt is not a situation you want to be in because of the high interest and um, it can definitely hurt your credit score. So you always want to make sure that you pay off your cards um, on the due date or before the due date. I highly recommend before the due date so you don't forget. Some people even pay them off right away. And you just want to make sure you make your payments on time and keep your utilization below 30%. So that means if your credit limit's $1,000, I highly recommend you spend only $300 of that. And if you do end up spending a little more, I would pay it off right away because um, you definitely don't want the high utilization on your credit report because that can affect your credit score. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash the subscribe button and stay tuned for more Mr. Tendy videos. And I'm Mr. Tendy, and I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.